Hey guys, Adam Enfro here. If you're new to the channel or haven't heard of me before, my name is Adam. I created one of the fastest growing blogs in existence at adamenfro.com. And as of the time of this recording, it makes me over $200,000 a month passively from blogging. So I wanna share this video. I did a webinar with a company called Jasper. They're an AI writing software. And I was teaching some of their community exactly how to run a profitable content business in the 2020s. So everything from content assembly, to link building, to monetization, to business strategy, and exactly what it takes. I thought it was a really interesting webinar. I hope you enjoy it. So I wanna to share it here on my YouTube channel. If you like it, make sure to also watch the free masterclass below. It's about 90 minutes of free content about how to start a profitable blogging business. So make sure to click that link in the description below. Enjoy the webinar, enjoy the presentation, and I will see you in the next video. Talk to you soon. This presentation uh, we're going to cover, it's about 30 minutes, and it's about how to turn your blog, how to turn your content into a money-making machine. So first of all, I just want to quickly do the, you know, the slide presentation of who am I. So you know, I was a person that I learned digital marketing over the course of about eight years. I didn't do great in college. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I learned about passive income probably back in 2008. I listened to like Pat Flynn and heard some podcasts. I read the four hour work week. I really liked the idea of it, but I didn't really know what I was doing. I tried and failed at a lot of online businesses. Over the years, I finally got my stuff together without swearing and got a, you know, started to get a real job in digital marketing. And it led me to a career that over the course of about five or six years led me to Austin, Texas, where I became an affiliate manager for a company called Big Commerce. And then I was the digital marketing director. But I saw my future. I saw that no matter how high I got up in this digital marketing career, I would always be answering to somebody in a suit that didn't really understand the numbers. And it was revenue based. And I would have to be stressed out to the max in these meetings every single week, no matter if I was a VP, director, CMO, it didn't matter. And I was working and stressed out to the max. I mean, I saw my future was a prison. I saw that I was working 50 hours a week and I was living in downtown Austin, but I wasn't really saving money. You know, I, I was making about $120,000 a year, which after taxes, I was probably bringing home seven or $8,000 a month. Most of it was going to rent and to bills and to having fun on the weekends and my car payment and all of that. I wasn't really saving money. I was kick, kind of kicking the can down and stressed out to the max. But, you know, fate kind of struck. I was I was in the right place at the right time. So I was an affiliate manager seeing all of these affiliates make six figures a month, some of them doing this blogging and affiliate marketing thing. And then I worked closely with the SEO team. So I saw what a high growth startup was doing from a content perspective. So I had the two best of both worlds in my job. And I took these things and I took these startup principles and I applied them to my own personal brand at adamenfroy.com in January of 2019. And the rest, they say, is history. I was able to surpass my full-time income in seven months with these strategies. And after that, I traveled the world. I went from working 50 hours a week plus all this time on my blog to spending about 10 hours a week on my blog for a while. Um, currently, I live in Florida with my wife and two dogs. I live a pretty simple life. You know, nothing too fancy or flashy. I still work on my website. Um, I make over, however, today I make over $200,000 a month for my blog. That's through pretty much mainly affiliate revenue, um, sponsored placements, well, things that we'll cover actually in this training. Uh, currently, I write to 550,000 monthly readers, and I teach over 1,000 students how to do this. So a lot of people that teach content and teach blogging started back in 2010, and they teach the same outdated stuff tonight, uh, today. So like, you know, a lot of the people that you've heard about in the marketing space, whether it's Pat Flynn or Backlinko or Neil Patel or these guys that got their start 10 years ago, can't teach this today because they haven't had to start it today. You know, the rules, the same rules don't apply anymore. So we have to upgrade our strategies. And to do that, like I'm teaching every step of the way as I go. So I want to teach from, you know, zero to my first 5,000. I taught that. And then zero to my first million we got there. Now, as I grow from 1 million to 10, which is what our plan is over the next couple of years. I'm going to teach every step of the way of that too, how to turn and create a real media business through your content. So there's a little bit of quick background on me, uh, just showing you some proof over it. If you haven't seen it before, this is my Ahrefs profile showing the growth of my you know, organic traffic over since January 2019, directly correlated basically with my backlinks and the, I rank, ranking for 400,000 keywords on Google. This is my profit and loss statement in QuickBooks from 2020, just 2021, just to show you the blog made $1.5 million. Here's the different revenue streams for it. Courses, affiliate, consulting, ad revenue, cost per click revenue, 1.5. After expenses, we made 1.1 million profit. 
So that's about 70, 75% profit margin on that business in 2021. So we want to talk about this and we're going to talk about what blogging is today and how to frame it in your mind because things have changed tremendously. So long gone are the old school days of blogging. Long gone are the days of I'm going to create a blog. I'm going to update my audience. I'm going to write about my life and my lifestyle and people are going to read this thing, you know, and that doesn't exist anymore. Writing every single word doesn't exist anymore either. And ranking for low competition keywords with thin content, 500 word articles, going after the long tail is not a way to build a sustainable business. What works today is blogging as an evergreen Google driven engine. You're not just getting a new audience and then they're reading your stuff because they like you. You're getting a brand new audience every single month in an evergreen way from Google traffic by ranking and getting this traffic consistently over months and months organically. That is a real business. Blogging is being a mediator of purchase decisions. So people search for things online, best laptop, best credit card, best project management software, best camping poles, tamp camping tents, doesn't matter what it is. Blogs provide that mediator through affiliate links to, for people to make those purchase decisions, which sometimes they're not even aware of being involved in that process. Blogging is being a real influencer. And what I mean by real, it's not creating some sexy pic on Instagram and then trying to sell a t-shirt to somebody and you can barely do it. You're actually making, you know, real influence. And by influence, I mean, you're influencing people's purchases online. My blog influences the purchases of over a million dollars of business software every single month. So that's a real influence that can actually help build your authority and make you a real brand online. And blogging today is updating your strategies for the 2020s because that's the decade we're in. The old rules don't apply anymore. So when I talk about blogs being mediators, what I mean is that Somebody searches for something on Google, they type things into their brain, and we own this digital real estate. We own this spot. There's top 10 results, right? You have to get on page one. We own one of these spots, and a lot of these physical or digital real estate spots here is actually more valuable than some physical real estate, unbelievably. People think of something, they type into your head, your blog, they get to your article on the best type of product that you're reviewing, they click your affiliate link, they, they make a sale, you make a commission. That's what I mean by mediator and being a middleman is a great position to be in. But how do we make money blogging in the 2020s? What has changed? Well, we need to capture and monetize attention. We live in the attention economy. People vying for your attention on everything from TikTok to YouTube to Instagram to Facebook to Google, all of this. And anyone can capture attention if they have the right strategy. But we have to monetize this attention. Now, to make money online, we can't capture attention for 10 minutes or 10 you know, days. We have to capture attention in an ongoing evergreen way on Google and on YouTube. Those are the two main places that you can actually get ongoing and build a consistent audience. So for this exercise, we're talking about Google and how to actually build an ongoing evergreen audience because to make consistent revenue, you need to get consistent clicks to your content, consistent clicks on your affiliate links and your products and all of those things. So we need to capture and monetize this attention and we want to make passive income, but there's no such thing as passive income. There really isn't. We can't just magically wave a wand and we start making money. We need to build a machine. We need to do build the actual infrastructure for ourselves and our life to get to passive income. So that's what I've learned over the last couple of years. It's like we need to build this machine, do the things at first that we don't like doing, and then build the machine that runs this whole sustainable thing for us. And first, the first part of this uh, machine is actually the content assembly line, what I call. So this is what you actually write. This is actually what a blog is. This is what content is. This is the actual articles that are being written. So what do we do this? Well, here's the content assembly line in a nutshell. And I teach this in the course in a lot of different areas. But here's the, here's the thesis and hypothesis. Content takes time to rank. So you publish something on Google. It's not going to show up on page one right away. It typically takes months to show up and actually start climbing the ranks. So if not every single article is going to rank, how do we create a simple system, a simple process to get as many articles ranking in as quickly as possible? Well, what we do is we create minimum viable posts, MVPs. We start thinking like a startup. We create these MVPs that can rank and make the most money. By doing that, we don't create some magical 10,000 word article out of the gate and perfect it and write, add all these images and videos and make it the best article ever. That's actually how I started doing my blog at first. I wanted to make everything perfect because I was scared and paralyzed that people were going to read this thing and judge me. But I realized that I can create these transactional affiliate-based articles. Maybe I don't include the top 20 companies that we're going to review. Maybe it's just five. And then I publish it. And then updates over time. Blogs are living, breathing things. And to make money, it's not just choosing some magical niche and writing some magical content. It's using data and traffic numbers and impressions and seeing what's actually working and then using a content assembly method and scaling the amount of content that you produce. 
So here's it in a nutshell. Step one is keyword research. We all know this. We have to conduct a keyword and write a keyword uh, to rank an article. One target keyword, one article. So we do keyword research and we can find these transactional articles to write in our niche. So when we think about what a blog is and what blog content is, whether you're a marketer or you're in an, any niche, what do blogs actually write? They write two different types of articles. It's really that simple. Transactional list posts and how-to informational posts. So let me cover these really quick. Informational posts are things like how to do things. So if you're a golf blog, you would write about how to swing a golf club, how to grip a golf club, how to chip, putt, grip, you know, all of those different things to make you look like an expert. However, you're not going to get monetized automatically by ranking for that stuff. You might be seen as an expert. They might join your email list, but it's not going to make you affiliate revenue out of the gate. On the same blog, you would also have best irons, best drivers, best putters, best wedges, all of the products in the niche. So any niche has this, whether it's camping, outdoors, golf, kitchen, home, lifestyle, barbecues, software. Every niche has these things. There's products in the niche that you want to review, best X, Y, Z. And then there's also how to do things in your niche. Typically, when you need to do things, you need products to do them. So you think about these two articles, and they're really easy to find with keyword tools. You search for how to plus your niche. You search for best plus your niche, and you'll find hundreds of potential articles that you can write. And we go through this process in depth in a lot of my other content. But first is keyword research. After you have your keyword, you create the content. So you can use a tool like Jasper, integrated with you know things like Surfer SEO and Grammarly to create a minimum viable article. And that's really simple. You can use a tool like Surfer and in their integration with Jasper. It literally tells you using machine learning what exact semantic keywords to include in the article. So to rank on Google, you first need to create an article that's optimized for search engines. So that includes things like properly, you know, putting the headings in the right place and putting the words in the right place to trick Google into thinking that it is the best article because their machine learning scans every article on the World Wide Web to see what they think is good based on this has a bunch of good keywords in it. It's very robust. That's part of the MVP process is creating a minimum viable post that's optimized for search engines. And that can be done really quickly with things like Jasper and Surfer. You can write an article in like an hour or two max instead of spending you know, eight hours on some grand masterpiece. So after that, yep. Do we have any, well, you want to stop here, Austin? Yeah. I was just going to add to that. You know, so many people here are new to the Jasper ecosystem as well. And so kind of giving context here, um, you know, Jasper is an AI that can write content for you. And since it's read 10% of the internet, it can write on any niche. Um, and so no matter what your blog is about, it can really help propel the assembly of content for you. Um, and Adam, before you had Jasper, about how long would it take you to write a MVP blog post from scratch? Well, I was, yeah, when I first started my blog, I wrote all the articles myself for the first like three to six months. And it would probably take me five or six hours to write an article, I would say, because I was putting in, I, for example, I did one on like best web, best web hosting. I still remember it. It was like a Saturday and I was spending my wonderful Saturday writing an article about web hosting. <laughs> and I had to, you know, put the individual companies in, do some research, write these things. And it, yeah, it was probably about five or six hours when I was doing it myself. And also back then you didn't have keyword research tools like a surfer SEO so not knowing exactly what keywords to include in that article so that you rank. Yeah, I was guessing. I was like, okay, so the keyword is, you know, so this one on screen here is like the best video editing software. But then it's like, all right, how many times do I actually add that term in? Like 10, 5, 80? I have no idea. And like people by themselves can't know these things because Google scans this stuff. And like Surfer's integration here with Jasper has it shows here. Video editing software is used six, pretty much 34 to 55 times in an article like this. Yep. And similarly, how Jasper scans the web, Surfer also, the integration, they scan all the top ranking articles to see the correlation and similarities to what Google is rewarding. So it gives you these simple things. And it's like, all right, add editing tools in four times, add edit videos in two to five times. And you start to just optimize the article over time. And this has a direct correlation to rankings. That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, if you really think about it, like the path of progress before this new modern 2022 tech stack, um, the path of progress took a long time. Like it, took, it could take months or years to, you know, actually narrow in on the, 
you know, perfect blog post to get on page one. And now we're talking, how long do you think Adam, you know, to create? Well, we'll get into the business aspect too, because I'd say like one hour potentially if I was going to write it, but we also want to get into the mindset of being a business owner and not being a writer. So using Jasper, but also maybe outsourcing Jasper as well to another freelancer or a person that can do it. So Absolutely. like today at this level of business, I have a content team that uses Jasper mm -hmm. and it's, it's really easy when you have that and we can get into that too in the Q and A and stuff about how do you write as many optimized articles as you can in a simple way? And how can you dictate the rules like get an 80 score in Surfer, get a, you know, do this in Jasper, use Grammarly and get a 90. You start to dictate these rules to make you, you get these really well assembled articles quickly. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, let's continue on. I think they have context now for uh, sure. what Jasper is. So awesome. So when we go back to it, we create an article and then we hit publish basically. And you know, I have this slide. This is an article of mine on podcast hosting. And you can see that blogging is a science. It's not an art. It's not creative writing. It's not being Ernest Hemingway and clacking away at the keyboard, staying up, trying to be the next great, you know, writer of our time. It's people are scanning blogs for information. They skim articles. They don't necessarily read them, especially in, in the informational space. Think about a time that you've maybe, maybe you were getting sick and you like searched your symptoms like we all do when we're you know, um, scared online and we, we think we're all WebMD doctors. How much of that article did you read? Did you read every single word or did you like skim down to the paragraph you wanted? Same is true of information for the most part in these blog posts. So there's a direct way to optimize and structure a post with the right H2 headings, the right H3 headings and the right formatting to make Google think that you have the best content also because it's you know, organized the best way and it makes it easiest to pull into search engines. So this whole thing is a science. It's very easy to do if you just know. And I learned this, you know, some of the best SEO people in the world when I, that I was working with, I wouldn't have known this otherwise. But blogging is a science. It's not an art. So basically what happens is you publish an article. Now what? Well, you won't get traffic usually for a while because Google has to index it. And you could be on anywhere from page two, if you're really lucky, to page 10 or page 20. When I first started my blog, I'd publish an article and I'd be on page like eight or nine or 10 getting no traffic because no one ever goes that far down the, the search results. But as you build knowledge graph and as you start to get some traction and you start updating content, your rankings will improve over time. So, uh, you know, you create a minimum viable post because then you begin to see what these rankings are. You begin to see which ones should I update? Which ones should I optimize? Which ones should I work on that can start ranking and make me money? So you have to get to page one. You have to create these content for, for search engines. But content is only half the equation because what you write on the page is like half of what helps you rank on search engines. The other half is link building. So to do that, you need a link building machine as well. So we have what we call the content assembly line and we need a link building machine. So again, we'll show near the end too, like that link to the free link building training. Link building is a very deep subject and there's a lot of different opinions on it. It was probably the number one reason that my blog was so successful. It's because when I first started, I published some articles on my blog and then I shifted probably 75% of my focus to link building and guest blogging and building real relationships in the niche to actually get links because links are the sign of authority. Think of the web as a world wide web. If you're just starting a new blog on the outskirts of the web and no one is linking to you, Google's never going to trust you because Google wants to basically give the best possible information and the safest answer to the question because, you know, that's what their whole purpose is, is to organize the world's information and give you the best answers. So they trust sites that already have traffic. They trust sites that have links to them. It's just that simple. So no, not every single post needs links, but posts that are competitive, posts that make you life-changing money will need some links to them typically. And there's a big myth, myth as well of passive link building. So it's like, just create great content and you'll get links. Like just create an amazing article with infographics and all this stuff and you'll just, or statistics and you'll get all these links. And that's just simply not true. The people that get links are the sites that are already ranking number one and two because they're the easiest to find and the easiest to source. So you have to actively do link building. However, there's a big problem today is that link building advice is outdated and not very good. There's tactics, there's individual tactics that are taught like guest blogging and broken link building and link reclamation and the skyscraper technique and all these different things of how to get links. But they fail to bring into account the human psychology of what links actually are. So links are like the currency of the internet. Links have intrinsic value. If I get a link to my blog, 
to an article and that article can then rank and make real money in the real world, then that has value. I'm not going to just ask for it for free. And that's the problem. I, my inbox gets inundated with 50 plus requests a day. Can, can I guest post for you? Will you add this to your article? And there's nothing of value in return. So there's two things to link building. One is you need to do it. You need to make it look as natural as possible, like you weren't even involved in it. And what I call is guest posts are the engine and partnerships are the fuel. And to do that, you need to build real relationships with people. So to do this, you also need to build an outreach and guest posting process and build real relationships with other bloggers. Like link building isn't a tactic. It's a value exchange. So there's, you know, in the, in the training that, that, you know, a hundred minute or so training that we sent you. We'll kind of pin it a little bit here because it's just such a deep topic and you can watch that full step-by-step -step training after this. But there's ways to think about link building from a human psychology perspective and really understand, try to understand what's in it for the other party. So for example, when I frame my link building, I don't say, you know, I want a link on your blog. I actually provide more value to them than they can to me. So you'll see here, I say I'm reaching out because I'm interested in collaborating on content. And then I also say, this is a key sentence here. I write four to six guest posts per month on other websites and can link to you in those. So links are like the currency of the internet. Links are traded. And this is, you know, the truth that a lot of people don't really know is that links are traded. Bloggers, guest bloggers, people that are in the space and writing can, you know, write guest posts and link to other people and build partnerships. And there's like transactional links where companies might want to be included here. So you link to them there. And a lot of this stuff is based on relationships. It's not just write blog posts, write a hundred articles, and then you'll get traffic and make money. No, you need links to do that. You need real relationships to do it. Cause most links, like when you look even at CNBC and CNN, how do they get their sources, right? They know people on Twitter. They have these relationships with sites like nerd wallet and tech radar. And they know every time that I'm going to go for a retirement statistic, I'm going to contact my contact at nerd wallet to add this link in on CNN.com or something like that. So most links are based on relationships. So as individual bloggers, we need to just kind of understand that and tweak our outreach strategy a little bit and actually focus on it from the beginning. And it's not about sending a million emails out there, insanely putting yourself out there, but it's a strategy that you can implement with a little bit of the right messaging and just sending a few messages a day. So it's something that you can really build and then your snowball effect of authority, building your domain rating, ranking for more, more keywords, making more affiliate sales, the ability to get you sales makes you more links. And it's this big snowball effect, effect of authority. Now, with all of that said, with the fact that basically the whole point of this, the whole point of creating a content business is to base, you know, we want to make passive income. We want to make money for ourselves. And to do that, we need to rank on Google. So when we think about it, though, everyone wants money right away. They want to say, how do I create? What's the niche? What's the secret niche? What's the secret formula that's going to make me money in like 30 days? And the truth is it doesn't exist. Monetization is a byproduct of ranking on Google for these specific things. And that is a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. Whoever wins, whoever ranks has the best content and the best, you know, links. And it's typically, you know, you use SEO tools and then you update your content over time, maybe making it a little bit better for human readers, making the intro a little bit better, adding more companies into the post, you know, slowly evolving these things over time and making your content better and more optimized for search intent and what people actually want. That's pretty easy because that's just us behind a computer writing stuff. Then there's the link building side of building relationships with other people. And that's not too difficult either. You just do some simple email outreach. We don't have to get on the phone. But monetization is a byproduct of ranking. So you have to rank to make money. So how do you make money blogging in months and not years with all of that said? You have to treat your blog like a business. So we covered, you know, for blogging specifically in the Google algorithm, and making a website that makes you life-changing money, you need to understand, uh, have a content machine and a link machine at first to do these things because you're always going to be working on those two things as a blogger or as a content creator, getting links, you know, building relationships and creating content, those two things. To make money, we treat it like a business. So here's an example. Early on, this was about nine months into my blog back in 2019, I got early, in early on a keyword, uh, podcast hosting. So I still rank number one for it on Google. You can Google it right now and you'll see um, adamenfroy.com. Nine months in, I was ranked, I got in on the keyword early. It's like a 95, really competitive one now. But that's part of the things that we teach as well is like riding the waves and finding new opportunities in your niche because there's always new products, new things to write about. But 
I started ranking really well for podcast hosting somewhere on page one. So I joined the affiliate programs. I added some companies into my post here and I was making like a couple hundred dollars a month and it was like three or $400 a month. And then one of the companies reached out to me and they said, Hey, we, I want you to put us number one in the article. They weren't number one at the time. They said, we'll pay you $4,000 a month if you put us number one in the article. And at this time I wasn't making all that much money yet from affiliate marketing. I was making a little bit of money, like doing some consulting stuff and trying to build this blog. So that was really game changing for me to see, holy crap, a company is going to pay me $4,000 a month just to be moved up the list. So I did it and I actually said, actually, can it be 5,000? Cause I, I had the experience at my previous job seeing that that's actually not much to these companies. So I said, could you make it five? And they said yes to that. So then I added them number one. And now that article, instead of making 500 a month, was making $5,000 a month. And that was one of my early thoughts. I was like, wow, that's, that's really interesting. That's $60,000 a year from one article. What is, you know, and over the course of time, I have learned so much. And I just, you know, you have to think bigger when it comes to blogging. So I was making $60,000 a year instead of around $500 a month. And that was just based on one email from an inbound person asking me for that. And then I started thinking, well, what other article, what other random articles are on my blog that I can monetize and how do I monetize them in different ways? So for example, like I wrote one on screenwriting software a while ago. It's software. It's about people that want to write screenplays and be the next Quentin Tarantino or something. Not completely related to blogging, right? Or email marketing or digital marketing. But this one, um, if you look at it, a company reached out and they're like, put us number one, we'll pay you $2,500 a month. Okay, definitely. And then I had final draft in here. They were number one for a while. They were making probably $500 a month through the affiliate links. And then I actually also have ads in this post. So between $2,500 a month for the first spot, 500, this post is probably making $3,200 a month for one random post on screenwriting software, something that I don't really know all that much about, but I know very good SEO and <laughs> link building and, and monetization techniques. So when you think about that, it's like that's $3,200 a month just for this one random article out of hundreds. Then there's one on OCR software. What's OCR software? Well, I didn't know. I found it in Ahrefs. It's optical character recognition software. It basically turns a PDF and it makes you able to edit it. So I found that one. Now, one, another company was paying me $1,000 a month for that article. And as you see on the right and the bottom, there's ads in the article. So I'm like, okay, there's another random article making money. Then, you know, a little bit later in my blog, um, especially when COVID came, there was a ton of search volume around webinar stuff. So I wrote an article uh, about webinar software and it started to rank really well. And then, you know, through COVID, people were searching for it a ton and it still has decent search volume. But this individual article makes me $15,000 a month through one sponsorship and all of my mainly affiliate links. So there's another one. And when we start to add all these things up, and then there's another post on business ideas. So business ideas is a broader term that I rank for. I think I'm on page two, but through all the variations, it gets a ton of traffic. Um, that one's only ads. Like there's some affiliate links in the article, but you know something as broad as business ideas. I don't know if they want to start a lawn care company. I don't know if they want to start a you know agency. So that link to Bluehost to start a blog isn't really effective. So we, we cover this and talking about search intent and how to monetize based on search intent. But this one gets a lot of traffic. So it has ads. So this one makes $5,000 a month in affiliate revenue. Every article on a blog is its own business. That is a key. And that's something I learned over the years is that, wow, like an article on OCR software can make me $1,000 a month. That could be like my rent years ago. I, I paid that in rent. Or $2,500 a month, that could be basically most of my bills, you know? And it's like, that's kind of crazy to think about. And all it requires is treating your blog like a business. All of these were pretty much inbound sales, not anything like I didn't reach out to these companies. They were asking me based on actually ranking for these keywords and content link building. It was all the content link building that I did. And the truth is you can do this over and over and over again in any niche. I did it in one of the most competitive niches out there, software and make money online niche. In the span of a couple of years, I basically passed all the old, you know, so-called influencers that taught this stuff since 2010. And I just want to kind of stress that this opportunity is a lot bigger than you think. So when we look at like the trajectory of our business, 2022, we're aiming and we'll probably hit around $4 million in revenue. And... We're just seeing as we grow out this, you know, blog, content, blogging, YouTube, 
courses, sales, all these different funnels and revenue streams, it's easy actually to see that where this is going to be a $10 million business in the next couple of years. It's actually a big failure if it isn't. So, and I didn't even know that existed when I first started my blog in 2019. I remember driving to work in my truck with, you know, nine website visitors in the morning. I'm like, Hey, that's pretty cool. Some people are hitting my website and then making the first 500 and a thousand. And now it's like, man, if we make any less than $200,000 a month, it's kind of a failure. We need to start scaling more. So your perspective changes, but the principles apply. And I want to keep stressing these things. And I'll show you, like, here's one from partner stack, one affiliate dashboard where there's there about 30,000 a month. Or this was January's Bluehost sales just for Bluehost was 9,700 that month. So just it's endless the amount of stuff you can write about. And it doesn't have to be software either. This is true in any niche. Outdoor gear, think of all the amounts of products that are out there or kitchen gadgets or tech. There's so many potential niches that you can write about and make all this money in. Mediavine ads, so getting about 12,800 in January 2022 from that. So it's just kind of an endless stream of different revenue streams that keep growing on itself. So the more that you can capture this attention online to serve your life on Google, and the more that you can monetize that attention in different ways, it just keeps growing on itself. Blogs are living, breathing things. And the great thing is, the more you do it, the more you know traction you get, the more money you make, and it just has a snowball effect of authority. And the profit margins on a blog my blog, if we look at 1.5 to 1.1 in profit, it's about a 75% margin. So take home pay of $1.1 million. Now that's before taxes. So I probably took them like 800,000 after taxes. But if we think about how do you make $1.1 million today as a business owner in take home profit, you know, before taxes? Well, to do that, my blog has 75% profit margin. And when we think about it in a business sense, to make $1.1 million profit in the real world, we'd have to run either 10 Starbucks locations. So that's based on their profit margin. I would have to spend about three to $4 million in startup capital to open those 10 Starbucks. And that's you know what I would need. I would probably need at least you know 100 or 200 employees. I don't know how much each <laughs> Starbucks location have, but it sounds like a lot of a headache. Or I would need to run 28 subways the average Subway store owner makes $42,000 in profit a year, selling um, about $400,000 in top line revenue at a 10% margin. And I would need $4.2 to $9.2 million in startup capital to open up those 28 Subways. I'd be dealing with all kinds of employees, all kinds of inventory. I'd have regional managers trying to go from different locations to make sure they're operating correctly. We'd have teenagers, you know, being hung over and not showing up to work. It would be a mess. It would be very confusing. And the, the opportunity is out there to create a real business for yourself on Google, on YouTube, on these platforms, and start for like $3 a month with web hosting. And you can create these businesses that would surpass owning tons of franchise locations, and it's all online, and it's all a lot easier to manage with just a few people. So that's basically the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how to run a blogging business, how to outsource and, and manage a team and kind of scale up as you grow. But I want to kind of leave you with this is the three secrets of turning your, your content, your blog into a money making machine. Number one, again, monetization is a byproduct of ranking, which is a byproduct of your content and link building efforts. You focus on the inputs, not the outputs. Everyone wants to make money overnight and start adding AdSense to their blogs and adding the affiliate links right away. The more that you do that, the less you focus on content and links. That's what gets you to these opportunities. Now, anyone can write articles. Anyone can use tools to create SEO optimized articles, but it takes real business tactics to make you real money. If you want to become an online business owner and create a business like this, the opportunity is out there, but you can't treat it like a hobby. You can't, you can, you don't have to spend an unlimited and absorbent amount of time on it. You could probably spend 10 hours a week on a business like this and still be successful, but you have to treat it like a business. And finally, you have to start thinking bigger. And I did not know these things. There wasn't anyone teaching me these things three years ago when I started, but the opportunity is bigger than you think. A $10 million a year business, a $100 million a year business actually isn't that big. And I'm realizing that like you can have a tiny, I could be a niche Google, you know, blog and YouTuber that never gets noticed at the airport. No one knows who is. It's kind of a random dude, but I could have a couple hundred students in a mastermind, you know, some few thousand course students, 
you'd be making, you know, two, a couple hundred articles ranking for affiliate revenue and be making like $50 million a year. And the opportunity is out there for many, many, many people to do this in many different niches. So is the world, is the, you know, online, is it saturated a little bit, but if you can actually apply the right strategies for the 2020s, anyone can jump in this opportunity and it can really serve your life. Like there's no reason that everyone shouldn't have a blog as a digital backup plan. I think the weird thing is relying on one job because what happens if you lose that job? So a blog, content business, something that you're growing to build a passive income machine in your life only brings more stability. So I just want everyone to start thinking bigger when it comes to that.